Hello everyone, this is the second lecture in the gate level minimization series using Kernow map. In the previous class, we have discussed about what a Kernow map is and why it is required. We have also looked at how to represent a Boolean function in a Kernow map. And we also saw the way in which the row and column headings of a Kernow map are named according to the gray code. In this particular class, we are going to look at the first step towards simplification of Boolean functions using Kernow map. So, we are, what we are going to do is, we are going to represent the Boolean function in the Kernow map, which we have already discussed. Then we are going to form groups of adjacent cells which has ones. So, the first step towards uh, performing a um, simplification of the Boolean functions in Kernow map is that we have to form groups of cells and not just any cells, the cells which has one and cells which are adjacent. So, adjacent cells which has ones. Now, while forming these groups, we have to follow certain rules. So, today in this lecture, we are going to look at what are So, the rule number one. So, the rule number one says that the groups may not include any cell containing zero. So, as you can see in the first, uh, this is a two variable kernel map. You can see this uh, blue line here shows a group but here you see it is uh, what this here it's it's a one and here it's a zero so we cannot form a group like this okay so because this is a one and this is a zero so we have to form groups where both the cells contain a one so only groups of ones will be considered now remember here that this is only in case you are using a sum of product form of your boolean function. We will come to that later. Next we have rule number 2. So we said we can we can form groups of ones which are cells which are adjacent. So you can see in the first one you in or in the second one here the cell here uh, these two cells this is a group of ones which is horizontal this is a group of one which is vert vertical so these cells are adjacent to each other so i can form a group so i have two groups here one is this horizontal group and the other is this vertical group however in the first map you can see here that this two we cannot group them together diagonally we cannot group them together because these two cells are not considered to be adjacent so this is the rule number two Horizontal and vertical groups can be formed, but not diagonal. Now, rule number three. How many cells should we include in our uh, in our group? So, we can form groups of ones which contains one cell, two cells, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, and so on. So, why? What is the general form of this? This is 2 to the power n cells. So, we can form a group of only 2 to the power n cells. That is power of 2. So, if n is equal to 0, if n here is equal to 0, then I get 2 to the power 0 is 1. So, I can have groups of 1 cell. If n is equal to 1, then I can have 2 to the power 1 is 2. So, I can have 2 cells. If n is 3, I can have 4 cells. If n is 4, then I can get 8. Uh, sorry, n is 3, then I can get 8, n is 4, then I can get 16 and so on. So, 2 to the power n is just in cells containing 1. So, the group must cons consist of this. 2 to the power n cells which are adjacent and which contains 1. So, you can see in the first Kernow map here, this is one, this 2 has been, 2 ones have been put together. So, this is a group of 2. Then below you can see in this kernel map, all the cells are one and all four cells are adjacent. So we can have the, we can have a group of four. But on this side, you can see this is a three variable kernel map. I have one, one, one. I cannot group these three, even though they are adjacent to each other. I cannot form this group because it is a group of three and I cannot have a group of three. I can only have a power of two. So this grouping is not allowed. Similarly here, this is a group of uh, 8, but here you see these are zeros, so I cannot consider this. Same way, I also cannot consider group of 5, these 5 ones here. 
so this is not allowed next now each group should be as large as possible so if you see let's look at the second uh, Kernow map that is here this Kernow map I have how many ones we have we have six ones so I can form groups like this this is a group of two this is another group of two and this is another group of two so I have three groups of size two each so this satisfies our conditions rules whatever we have seen so far however this rule number four says that each group should be as large as possible so can I form a bigger group with this yes I can form a group of four with these four so this is a group of one group of four same way I can form another group of four out here with this two uh, with this four cells out here so I can have two groups of size four instead of three groups of size two so this is wrong whereas this is right now the rule next rule is that each cell containing a one must be in at least one group so you can see this is a group of two and this is a group of one at least one must be present in the group then rule number six now we saw in the uh, rule number four that we have six cells like here we have six ones in the cells so I can com combine this four and this four now what it uh, shows us that I can have this two appears in both groups it appears in the first group and it also appears in the second group so it brings us to the rule number six which says that groups may overlap so groups may overlap so if I have a larger group if I can get a larger group then I can have an overlapping of groups so I may have an overlapping of groups whereas this one because I can have a bigger bigger group with this four and these four so I will not make smaller groups next rule number seven rule number seven says that groups may wrap around the table that is if you look at this cells here it has a one here it has a one here it has a one here and it has a one here so now I can combine these two with these two okay. so this cell in this cell and this cell and this cell can be combined into a group of four how is it possible it's because the groups can wrap around the table so if you just think of this as a sheet of paper you draw this in a sheet of paper and then you form a, a cylinder out of it okay you see that these two cells are adjacent to these two cells so we can combine them together similarly this cell the cell here 0 0 0 and 0 0 1 these two are adjacent to each other if you just roll the paper where you have drawn this table in a, a horizontal way then this two are adjacent to each other okay so this and this also can be combined the rules can uh, this uh, groups can wrap around the table and then rule number eight is that there should be as few groups as possible as long as it does not contradict any of the previous rules so as we have seen we here we could get three three groups but our aim is to have larger groups and larger groups and lesser number of groups so lesser number of groups we have out here I have two larger groups instead of three smaller groups so this is so together these are the rules to be followed when we group together these uh, uh, the ones in the kernel map so remember rule number one no zeros allowed rule number two no diagonals rule number three only power of two number of cells in each group then groups must be as large as possible every one that means the digit one must be in at least one group no one will be left alone and uh, overlapping is allowed among groups wrap around is allowed within groups across the table and the fewest number of groups possible so these are the eight groups which we will use for performing the groups eight, eight number of rules so in the next class we will discuss about 
how we can use these rules to form our groups and then we can perform our minimizations. Thank you.